Um, so Stefan is going to be um, giving a paper entitled Augmenting the Vernacular, the Emotional Impact of Cognitive Affordance in the Built Environment. Uh, that's correct. Uh, let me share my screen. There we go. Uh, brilliant. So uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is uh, Stefan Florescu, um, and I'm going to present today the paper that I've done as a student at the Barnes School of Architecture. Uh, the paper is uh, entitled Augmenting the Vernacular, the Emotional Impact of Cognitive Affordance in the Built Environment. Oh. Today, by augmented reality, we understand the technology that integrates in real time digital information with the real world environment. AR enhances the experience of the user by superimposing virtual worlds on top of the physical environment using mobile devices or special headgears. Despite the youth of the field, uh, AR technology reached global recognition in 2017 after the launch of uh, the mobile game Pokemon Go. Then AR was pushed forward by the popular applications such as Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook. Although uh, AR technology was originally developed to facilitate and ease uh, specific industrial tasks, um, now it's on the verge of, of transforming more domains such as art, entertainment, construction, and engineering. In the construction, in the architecture and construction, um, AR capabilities are yet reduced, and they're more focused on visualizing and co um, uh, on construction management. These ideas were also touched by the previous speakers as well. Uh, but this paper aims to analyze the use of AR technology in architecture from a different point of view, namely focusing on the effects um, and changes that has over the users. Uh, there are three types of augmented reality: the no-target AR the image target AR, um, and the object, ob object target AR, which is the one that this paper is going to use. In the same time, when you augment a virtual layer on top of a physical layer, you change the object's affordance. Thus, you can manipulate its form, function, or perception. Um, the, the subject of this paper was driven by the increased fascination of myself and the general public with the augmented reality technology, uh, but also by a very specific situation in Switzerland, uh, in Albinen, uh, a rural settlement with decreasing demographics where newcomers are being paid by local authorities to move in and settle. The project puts forward the idea of an augmentable architecture that through AR will enhance visually by adding cognitive affordance, thus offering the image of a much more familiar environment and implicitly inducing a new level of comfort or, or well-being for the new users. The paper aims to analyze and answer the core questions of the design idea, namely if AR has an emotional effect over the user in the built environment. Uh, the immigrant condition in Switzerland is very specific. Foreigners that immigrate there have a very increased rate of higher education uh, qualification, and they are also um, uh, based in urban environments. At the same time, Switzerland has an alarming rural to urban migration. Swiss villages cannot uh, are threatened to perish because um, big, uh, because people are moving from rural to urban environments, and in the same time, the urban environments are are, are, are they cannot cope with this kind of exponential growth. Um, Albinen, which is the village in which my study will be based, it's a municipality in the district of Loic in, in, in the uh, canton of Valle in, um, in central Switzerland. Um, firstly mentioned in, in uh, 13th century, Albinen has a population of only 238 people. Uh, it's a very peaceful uh, and quiet village with classic breathtaking Swiss views, and also the entire village is a Swiss, uh, it's a Swiss heritage site. Uh, local authorities adopted an uncommon strategy in order to tackle this problem uh, of um, not having enough uh, people that are still living in the city, in, in the village. Um, and they tackled this problem by offering uh, uh, newcomers uh, a settlement grant. Uh, a settlement grant. But the main concern that fears local authorities is that the newcomers, who, uh, which probably will come from the urban environment, um, will not fully accommodate to their new rural lifestyle, um, and they will live there for only how long they're being contractually committed. Um, so, um, architecture and technology uh, can be an answer to this challenge uh, of uh, accommodation uncertainty. Air technology can be calibrated to augment the rural landscape with rural uh, urban elements in a very specific manner, assuring a gradual transition from city to village. 
in this way, the new settlers can comprehend and experience the new landscape gradually until they're fully ac um, accustomed to the new lifestyle. But what is actually happening when the physical uh, is being augmented with virtual visual information? Does a higher level of cognitive affordance correlate with a higher level of well-being? In psychology, affordances are defined as the total amount of information and uh, transactions uh, that are given by the environment to the individual. Affordances offer clues about how an object should be used, usually by the object itself or, uh, or uh, it, in its context. Cognitive affordances are uh, covering all the design features that help the user with their cognitive actions, thinking, doing interaction, making decisions, learning, understanding, and remembering. An illustrative example of the cognitive affordance um, is the icon on a button. This allows you to understand uh, what is the functionality of the button and therefore how to use it accordingly. Um, in order to test the hypothesis, a series of experiments uh, were conducted over a group of participants. Uh, the experiment consists in each participant experiencing various augmented reality environments over a physical model while their brain activity uh, is being recorded. The experiment aims to analyze in an objective and subjective manners if participants' well-being emotions are triggered by the experiments. The physical ambient was uh, as neutral as possible with no visual dominant element within the testing ground uh, that can alter participants' genuine reaction. A homogeneous group of participants was, was chosen to take part in this test, taking under consideration age, gender, and experience with AI environments. Also, it's worth mentioning that all participants were architecturally trained students. The emotional development of the participants was measured by monitoring their brainwave activity. This was measured with uh, the MindBand uh, headset, a portable EEG device with three, uh, uh, three gold-plated tri sensors. The dry sensors were placed on the forehead for participants. Uh, the location uh, which allows EEG to measure brainwave activity of the prefrontal cortex, which is usually the area where higher thinking and emotions uh, occur. Um, the AR environment was presented through participants using a video, video see-through device, uh, namely an iPad Pro, as you can see in the photo. And for this experiment, an iOS, uh, iOS application was, was designed um, in order to produce the virtual, uh, the virtual environment, the augmented reality. The application was created using uh, Vuforia model target and Unity, allowing the iPad camera to detect and track uh, the 3D printed physical model and overlay virtual 3D elements onto it. Um, these are some, some uh, uh, screen grabs uh, from Unity. The virtual environment was presented to participants in two tests, uh, the control AR test and the AR test. The control AR test augmented the foreground of the physical model with an avatar of a girl uh, hand waving um, to the user. This type of information identifies as false, false affordance because it was not contributing anyhow to uh, how to use the model or how to interact with it. The AR test, on the other hand, changes only a single variable in the control experiment. So behind the waving girl that was in the foreground, the main experiment adds to the physical model a rich virtual layer of architectural information, architectural elements, and materiality. The, uh, this AR information translates into an influx of cognitive affordance. Uh, and you can see here the, 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 the plane model, uh, then the uh, um, control test with the girl waving, and then um, uh, the actual test uh, environment. Um, and the, here is a participant investigating the AR environment. Um, the process of generating emotion is complex and it involves psychological, biological, and neurological factors. So within this experiment, well, well-being uh, deals with the comfort of having more knowledge about the surrounding environment as an as an antithetic example, basically, you don't feel comfortable in darkness because you don't have enough information about your environment. So uh, in here, because you have more information about the environment, you tend to feel much more um, uh, comfortable. This paper uh, will assess emotions using neur neurological and self-assessed methods. So the, the neurological method uh, consists in examining the nervous system throughout neuroimaging. And for, the, for this test, the EEG was chosen as a method. The brain waves recorded by electrodes are divided into six frequencies. Uh, this paper will, will um, be measuring um, and interpreting only the higher alpha uh, brain waves and the lower beta brain waves because these can be correlated with the emotions that we are looking for. 
Um, the self-assessed method were, consisted in answering a set of questions before and after the test, uh, with the core questions remaining unchanged before and after the actual uh, augmented reality test. Um, the model was uh, the, the model that I presented to the participants was specifically designed not to indicate any obvious answer. Um, for example, when asked about the landscape uh, in which the model uh, is set in, participants' answers were very diverse. But after the AR experience, uh, the vast majority of them changed their answer uh, to rural village, which is actually the, uh, the correct one. Same thing happened um, to the question, uh, with what geographic region can you associate the la this landscape? After being exposed to the AR environment, partic participants switched the answer resulting in an overwhelmingly 83% of them picking Western Europe, which is also the correct answer. Another question uh, uh, was, um, uh, what is the function of the building in the, in, 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 in the, in the foreground? Um, and when they were exposed to the, uh, before being exposed, they picked civic, but after that, the response shifted dramatically um, to residential, which again, it's uh, the, de the desired uh, answer. Um, and I can say that 84% uh, of the respondents actually uh, were feeling super comfortable in the, in the or not were feeling, but will, will think will feel very comfortable within the uh, environment described by the air environment. Um, also, uh, another um, another induced emotion that they considered during the um, uh, augmented reality environment was well-being, uh, anticipation, and surprise. Um, yeah, so after analyzing the data from the two questionnaires, we can say that in average, 58% of the participants changed their answer, and 100% of those changes were for the correct answer. Uh, that's quite an interesting stat. Um, then uh, the how how we how I interpreted the the other part of the the uh, the, the test the objective um, assessment the EEG results were displayed by the software into three uh, different graphs raw EEG data emotion graphs and brain waves frequency uh, bands EEG readings are based on integrating three variables frequency voltage and morphology the second graph describes the strength of emotions over time. This shows attention, meditation, and zone, which kind of represents a combination between mental focus, comfort, and well-being. The last graph shows the frequency of the brain wave in relation to time. EEG results uh, collected by all participants, you can actually see very easy that they, 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 they are very different, even though they experience the same environment. So what can we say? We, I mean, I could say that cognitive affordance changed participants' mind, as, as, uh, as I said previously. The first question uh, tested if the information provided by the uh, physical model was sufficient to trigger what in cognitive neuroscience it's, it's called pattern recognition. Although all participants were architectural trained, the cognitive information of the model was inadequate in order to activate and uh, the encoding visual pattern. Based on their architectural knowledge, participants were trying to associate the geometry, the, the ge geometric forms of the model with different architectural size, styles specific to each geographical region. But due to the insufficient cognitive information provided, participants could not accurately indicate the geographical area of origin. The augmented reality environment presented here added an influx of cognitive affordance. Uh, to the physical model in, in, in the form of architectural elements, architectural details, and materiality. The same group of participants responded differently after the AR experience. This suggests that the cognitive affordance added by the AR environment generated enough information in order to trigger participants' pattern recognition. At the declarative level, participants' answers describe an emotional state of positive, with positive valences within the AR environment. By analyzing the individual results from the brainwave frequency graphs, it can easily be seen uh, a direct correlation between the paroxysmal voltage and the answers given at the post-AR questionnaire, together with observation made during the experiment. Um, for example, uh, in here at second number 10, the EEG recording um, uh, recorded a, a, a transient paroxysmal wave. This represents a peak in the participant's emotional response and correlates with the physical reaction of ex actually exclaiming the answer of one of the questions. Another similar example was encountered uh, at this participant. In the brain wave frequency chart, we can identify an, um, an intensified wave activity around second 120. This corresponds with the moment when the participant was analyzing architectural details of the facade um, and matches with uh, the answer provided at, at the relevant question, namely balustrades. 
Given all the above, the paper proved uh, the question of the hypothesis. A higher level of cognitive affordance does correlate with a higher level of well-being, and it does influence the general emotion, e emotional state of the user together with its decision making. Um, so what are the next steps? Uh, in our experiment, augmented reality was adding in, was in our in, in my experiment, the um, augmented reality environment was adding information to the existing object. The extra layer of information was influencing a viewer's emotion and their decision making. The same principle can be used as a design tool, but instead of adding information, AR can reveal cognitive affordance. So thus, in time, participants will have access to more and more information and it will adapt to the new environment gradually at the same time by revealing a new, new layer. Participants can discover new functions um, previously unknown to them. So for example, this is also a design study, uh, at my design project, which I done in parallel with, with with this paper. And then in here, I was proposing to have basically uh, um, uh, underneath a staircase, there could be those swings. But at the beginning, when the user is using the headset in order to familiarize himself with the environment, he won't be able to see the function hidden behind or uh, a, a literally pile of, 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 of earth could become a playground um, and so on and so on. Um, beyond the theoretical and speculative realm, Augmented reality uh, became a tool in the present uh, day of the architects. So at HMM Architects office in which I, I worked as an architectural assistant, um, AR is used in, uh, in a very efficient method, as a very efficient method in order to communicate ideas and information to our clients. As an example, here we have um, um, a pack sent to a client. The pack provides a 3D printed model uh, of the of the proposed design and through AR or through the, the AR app designed, a new cognitive information was added in order to better explain the key attributes of the project. Uh, inside the pack, um, um, there was the model who actually triggered the whole experience, instructions and a video see-through device. And then you can actually see here different levels. So uh, circulation, key figures about areas and the environment and green spaces. So thank you very much.